Welcome to another great cow basic uh, demonstration. This is a quick demonstration of pulse width modulation. So what is pulse width modulation? It's a uh, it's a frequency pulse with a width called the duty. And this particular one happens to be 40 checking kilohertz with a variable 10 bit duty cycle. And as you increase the duty value, it increases the duty cycle, and you see the column width increase from 0 to 1023. That's called the duty cycle. So at the top, I can see a frequency counter, and it says 40k. Now, what are the options in Great Car Basic? We have a number of options, okay? You can bit bang it yourself. You can ignore our code, and you can just poke stuff in the registers and poke stuff in the bits and read the data sheet. Or you can use what's called we call software emulation. You can send it a duty and the number of pulses or periods, you know, and it will do a quick burst of pulse width modulation. The there is a method called fixed mode number three, which uses the CCP pulse width module, and the PMW module is um, is programmed by simply stating the frequency and the duty. You turn it on or you turn it off, but you can't change the frequency on the fly. And you can't change the duty. Hence, I've called it fixed mode. Variable mode uses the same module, but you can change the frequency and the duty. And then there is uh, a variable 10-bit pulse width mod um, module, which is you know, bit, which is specifically specifically uh, a module which it, which doesn't do capture like the previous one at number four. There is a sixth option, but I'm not showing it. Okay, well, I'm going to focus on this number five, okay, which is number five, which is a 10 bit signal, okay, 10 bit signal being from zero to 1023. Okay, let's quickly knock up a program, okay, so I know that um, we got to do some stuff to get it operating, so I'm going to tell it I got a chip, okay, well, I got a 16 LF 1705, and I'm going to program it at 32 kilohertz, okay. Now, how do I know that? Because I got my pick kit here, and if I do a, um, let me have a quick look. And if I just check the communication, it says there's an LF1705 sitting there. So they sort of have to match up, don't they? Really? Yeah. Well, I've got the scope hooked up to uh, port um, C dot C5. So I've got to tell it that port C5 is an out port because I'm going to send my signal out C5. Now this chip. The 1705 happens to be a PPS chip. So I've got to go to the data sheet and figure out what all those ports are. But I don't, because remember, in Great Car Basic, we have the PPS tool. And the PPS tool allows me to select from all these chips. So I can take the LF1705. I can say, right, what pulse width module do I want to use? I want to use a number three. I could use any uh, the other one, which is number four. Because the, here it is, it just tells you which ones are operational. And I can then say, right, I'm going to hang it off of uh, output on C5. I'm going to add it into this little editor here, copy that, and then I'm just going to paste that into my code. And it will automatically now create the code that's required to turn on the pulse width modulation channel 3. So how do I program it? Well, look, I'm going to type in 8 pulse width modulation. I could have gone to the um, help. Actually, we'll go to the help. Let's go to the help. It might be live. Okay, here's the help. It says, right, channel frequency duty. But I'm using 10 bits. So I look for 10 bit support, and other timers use the 10 bit. So that each channel frequency duty cycle timer. And the timer, let's have a look. So the channel can be 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, but it's got to correspond and be to my modules so it must be supported well we know three is supported by this chip because it was in the pps tool the frequency well it was running up 40 i'm going to prove to you it's different we'll, we'll take 60 right okay the duty cycle is a 10-bit cycle so if i want to set this to 50 percent in my brain i'm going to do this in my brain 50 percent cycle to start with well i'm going to set it to 512 and i'm going to select time of six okay just as a random number there's no more logic to be on that channel three 60 is my frequency. I want to run it at 50% and I'm going to run it on timer 6. 
Now my program would stop if I just ran this. So I'm just going to put a loop in here to stop the program from uh, just um, not doing anything. Oh, I need to save the file. So what have I done? I specified the chair, the frequency. I've specified the... Um, there we go. Right. I've specified the um, PPS configuration. Don't always need PPS, remember, because... Um, PPS is um, only on specific chips. So I'm just going to compile that up. It's going through the um, the validator of Great Cloud Basic. It's going to compile it, and then it's going to take that compiled language. You're going to put it to assembler, and then I'm going to pick the assembler up. I'm going to stick it into my um, pick kit. Well, it's a typo because I can see 16. Hey, that's a good test, isn't it? It picked up a um, 16 FLF 1705. For those who are watching closely, you should have spotted that. Okay, I'm going to import that file into um, my PitKit 3. I can see it's new file 100. For some reason, the editor seems to have stopped incrementing files at 100 today, but never mind. And I'm just going to load that in. Okay, so it's quickly loading it in. Let's have a look at the camera. As previous, just just it was quickly programming it, and it's programmed it. Now, how do I know it's programmed it? Well, I can look at the screen, and it says here 59.99919, and down here I see a duty cycle flashing between 49.96 and 50. That's pretty fast. Very easy code. Couple of gotchas, okay? Not gotcha. Just be aware. This. It's not a byte number. It has to be a word. So if you want to make it vary, you're going to have to dimension a word. Okay. I'm going to call it duty value. Okay. And I'm going to have to define that as a word. Okay. All right. There we go. And if I put duty value into my program here, it will be set to none. Zero. Blah. So I'm going to dump that and put my, that inside this little loop down here. Okay. Now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment my duty value from 0 to 1023. And then it's a for statement. So I just need a next next to it. And I'm therefore going to change the duty value. Now, so that you can see it, okay, I'm just going to say wait for one millisecond. Otherwise, my scope, you won't really see what's going on, on the screen, okay? So it's going to cycle through. It's going to assign duty value to zero to 123. It's going to call the func the method. It's going to set the different duty values, and then it's going to go back to zero. So we should ex expect to see it program it, and then the column expand out and then collapse because I'm going back to zero, and then it will go. It will then grow out and collapse back to zero. So it's not the same demonstration as I wrote before because I ain't got time. Okay. All right. Let's have a little zoom in on the scope. That's just compiling that up. So it's just programming it. Flash, flash, flash. Okay. Oh, there we go. Look. My gosh. Doing what you expect. Zero. You can see zero. Let me just put a pause on it. How do I pause my scope? Hey, good. I can press that. Look, so I can press that is a very low value, maybe between 0 and 25 or 100 maybe. And then we revert it back. You can see that it's staying there. So if I put a, if I put more of a delay on this, it'd be quiet. If I put a wait 10 milliseconds here, we should see it sitting at um, a full value, 3.5, 3.3 volts on the scope. Scope is currently set to 500 um, millivolts per graduation, so that's about three volts, which is very good. And it's now compiling it. Now, you uh, may be thinking that's the scope um, sort of stuttering. No, it's the camera. Okay. And there we go. It's sitting there for a little bit longer, look, when it's at full value 10 milliseconds. Cool. How can I prove that? Look, you can see there's something different about it coming in. Look at that. So what what have we seen? We've seen that we can take a chip, we can specify the frequency, we can assign the PPS to put the uh, pulse bit modulation module out on a specific port. We have to put the port as an output. Well, try it, just turn it off and it won't work. And then we can pass values to here. So if I wanted to make this go up like it was before, 
Um, that's when we jo when you join them. I can simply turn these around 1023 and take it back to zero. Now I could change this timer to four. Hey, why don't we do that? Though? So we're going to take it up on six and back on two, which is a bit mental, but let's be crazy. So what we're seeing here is that on the way up, we're going to use timer six and on, but on the way down, timer two. Only just because we can. There's no ration. There's no reason to do that. Just leave it on one timer, typically. Timer, typically timer two. Okay. So it's just going to flash that. There we go. It's flashing. It's uh, two. That's it. Oh, there we go. It's working. So we're now back where we started. We can see that the column, the column is growing as we're sending it the value, and then as the duty value is being reduced back to zero, we can see that the duty cycle is being reduced. Well, oh. wanted a quick demo, a pulse bit modulation using Great Car Basic, and we'll call that a wrap.